So good evening, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, we're trying out something different um, here on a Monday night. We've been doing them on Tuesday evenings for a long time. So very glad we've got as many people that made it here. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of confusion for a while, but we just wanted to see if we could reach different people on a Monday night or um, people that couldn't normally come on a Tuesday. Why we're doing it here on a Monday night for a change. Um, I got the honor of doing the first one. So tonight I'm going to talk out uh, talk about the pop out of the box pattern, and it, it's one of my favorite patterns. You're not going to see any more slides. We're just going to go to some charts and get into the basics of the pop out of the box pattern. But it is one of my favorite patterns, and one of the reasons it's a very low risk. Um, entry pattern into a trade and um, well I've just used it for years and years and years um, they're easy to see they're um, pretty easy to trade and um, so if you guys are interested let's just jump right in here um, the pop out of the box pattern before we really go too far here on the pop out of the box one of the first things that we need to talk about is trend and trend is everything to me um, without support resistance and trend I literally could not trade um, I don't I'm not big on indicators I use very few indicators in what I do I'm a price action guy I study the price of the chart you're going to notice that my charts are white background, black and white candles only. Okay, um, It's a proven fact. You can go look it up online. The human eye can see black and white much easier. And it's so easy to identify price patterns with black and white candles and a white background chart. If you start coloring them up, trust me on this, you're going to miss a lot of things in the market and in the price action of the charts. But when it comes to trend, um, we uh, if we could all make an agreement here that the first higher low is where a trend begins for an upside. The trend doesn't begin down here. On a short chart, the trend begins on the first lower high. That is the potential of the downtrend. The downtrend does not begin here. Okay, so if we can agree on that, then we only, I only trade stocks that are in trends. Okay, stocks that are moving into trends, I don't try to, I, I really don't try to predict anything. If any of you watch my morning market prep videos, I don't try to predict anything in charts. What I do is I look at the chart and the price patterns in the chart and I look at it in such a way what happens if up goes down. That helps me plan a trade. I can understand the risk of a trade and I literally make a trade come to me and that's really true in the pop out of the box pattern. The reason I pulled this back in the diamonds I want to show you that it was the higher low right here that created the upside trend. Okay, It'll always be that. Now they can come in two different forms. One being that push up and the pullback. We call that a pullback opportunity trade and you're waiting for the buyers to step up. Okay, Same thing is true on a downtrend. We look for the rally back and we're looking for the sellers to step in. Okay to continue that price pattern to the downside, okay? The other pattern is what I call the pop out of the box because we see this all the time, a stock will rally, consolidate, and then see buyers stepping in and we're continuing on in the trend. Now one of the things that's critical about these patterns is they happen somewhere along a trend and they're better off if they have a price support underneath. 
Okay, so if I take this chart in the diamonds and pull this back right over here, what you can see in this chart is this nice little tight consolidation right in here. Okay, so we rallied to the upside and I want you to notice that that trade ends up coming in right along the trend and right at price support chart. Those are going to be your highest probability trades. Okay, if they have trend and support underneath them, if they're very near trend and very near support. As a matter of fact, my rule that I trade, one of my basic rules is that I only trade stocks that are in a trend. Okay, I always buy them at or near price support and trend. When I short stocks, I only sell stocks in a downtrend. And I sell stocks at or near price resistance trend for the downside move. Okay, here's a pop out of the box down. Stock failed, consolidated over, and you're waiting for the short. There's your short. Now the cool thing about these patterns, guys, is you don't have to predict them. In fact, I'm gonna warn you not to predict them. What you want to do is you wanna be paying attention to the trend, you wanna be paying attention to the support, the chart or resistance in the chart, and you wanna be watching that trade and making it come to you. And what I mean by that is making it come to you is literally you don't anticipate the trade because I don't know, you don't know, nobody knows what day it's going to make that expected move. You notice here in this price pattern to the downside, this candle here popped up. It tried to go up. Couldn't go up. If you anticipate this trade, if you try to predict which way it's going to go and you get short in here and that stock pops, you might stop yourself out with a loss. But if you literally wait, if you place a price alert in that chart and say fall below here, you make the trade come to you. Predicting, make the trade fail and come to you for the winning trade. The same thing is true for the long side trade. We find that price pattern that sets itself up. We're looking for that nice tight consolidation and I'll explain tight consolidation here in just a moment. We set a price alert in that chart above that tight consolidation and we wait for the buyers to prove that they have the energy to push on through. That way, if this fails right in here, we're not in the trade. We don't have to worry about it. And I'll show you some recent examples where that's occurred. Okay. And what we're looking for in a tight consolidation, my rule is, and you can, you can set that rule however you want, but I generally want my rule between the high side of the consolidation. I'm going to use an example that we're moving to the upside. Got an upside potential trend going on in here. and We've consolidated in this range. Is I want to see the range from the high to the low of about 3%. Because if I have it in that range of 3%, I can set a stop loss below here and it's going to be an acceptable stop loss. So once I'm triggered in the trade, stop loss goes in and I don't have to worry about how much risk I'm taking. Low risk entry trades. And you can be pickier than that. You can, you can say, I only want to look for patterns that are even tighter. Okay. And then we make the trade alert us into the position. And back in the day when I couldn't watch the market, I would literally set trades <clears throat> where the upside of that pattern 
okay in that trade my alert would be up here and I would say buy me only if the stock is at least 25 cents above that it had to move up and push through for me to enter the trade and I set it as an automatic entry my stop loss would drop in automatically here okay, underneath the price pattern okay so when we look at these tight consolidation patterns and here's what what is really important to me um, on these if you look right here in this pattern see how tight that is what that pattern is showing us is across here we can see where the sellers are okay we can see that the sellers are preventing that from moving on up we know we're in an upside trend so we're favoring this for an upside potential move we can see that the trend after this first move kind of flattened out a little bit right in there so we're near trend and we're pretty darn near a price support right in here in the chart price support our tight consolidation here it's very tight in this pattern i place an alert up here wait for the trade to trigger stop loss goes underneath that tight consolidation so i have very little risk in the trade small risk trades that's what i like high probability trades the tra trade is already in a trend and you can see it repeated itself here repeated itself there repeated itself here here Stocks will sometimes get into this, I call it a stepper pattern. Step, there's your riser, step, riser, step, riser, step. It's just stepping up that pattern with these nice little pop out of the box pattern trades that have a high probability. Okay. No, no, thanks, Ed. Um, that's no problem. So when you're looking for these patterns, what you want to look for, and this is one of the reasons why I think it's really important that everybody has a chart that you don't have a bunch of junk on it. What I mean by junk is a whole bunch of indicators and that you have a black and white pattern chart because can you guys see how easy they are to spot? You don't have to work real hard to find them. You can just flip through charts and go, oh, wait, there's a pattern setting up. Set an alert and wait for the trade. You can identify trend and support. You got plenty of time to go look to see whether there's options available on it, whether you want the stock, if it trades enough. Um, open interest or whether it trades enough volume for the stock trade and you can literally wait for that trade to come to you in the position and the thing is I'm not just cherry picking this chart now let me let me also qualify here my pop out of the pop box pattern it, it can be used on any time frame okay what it requires is four candles there's actually a pattern in the market it's called a mat hold pattern okay it's a candlestick pattern and that's three candles but it's four candles plus okay well, I don't care if a trade consolidates for two weeks as long as it holds that nice tight consolidation okay based on how much risk to the stop loss bio okay i know how much risk i can take on a trade everyone should know that how much risk i want to take on a trade so it's easy if my entry is here 
how much risk do I have to take to the stop loss? Okay, I can figure that out really easy. Stop loss goes underneath here. We can see where the buyers step in. Okay. So I can plan my risk before I ever enter the trade, before I even know if it's going to trigger. I know how much I can I'm going to have to risk on this trade. If this consolidation, that's why I said I want to see that consolidation usually around 3% or less. Because if I know I set my stop loss underneath here, I'm going to have 5, 4 or 5% risk on the trade. Okay, if the if the consolidation is real whippy and I've got, you know, 8% between the highs and the lows, well, I know that's not my trade. I just move on. I'm not interested in that. Too much risk in the trade. Okay, now the reason this occurs, guys, is as we move up or when we move down, the market starts to develop structure. What we haven't seen here for a while is really good structure in the market because we've been racing in or racing out. It's just been all whip and all emotion, and things like that. But once we establish that trend in a chart, price action settles down. It becomes much more stable. So we wanna look for that precise that tight consolidating pattern. Think about it. If you have a tight consolidating pattern here and the price action is very concise, very deliberate, holding trend, holding support, let me ask you guys, do you think your odds are going to improve of having a winning trade? If the price action is all erratic, really high ups and downs in that consolidation whipping around, it's not in a good clean trend, it's not near support, your odds are gonna be less of winning, right? So what we wanna look for is we wanna look for those patterns that are high quality, not just any pattern. Because remember, you and I only have so much money that we can put into the market. Care how rich you are, I don't care how poor you are, there's only so much we can put in risk in any one trade. Okay, So we have to figure out how much risk we can take, and then that sets these patterns. That says how much you can risk on a trade. You can run by one and see one and go, nope, that doesn't fit me, move on, find another pattern. Okay. So there's a lot of these patterns that show up in charts all over the place. And, and let me tell you, you know, somebody's going to ask, can you scan for these? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, we have a um, software, um, Ed, here in that's, that's posting in the room. Everyone knows Ed, I think, um, has um, software called LTA or Live Trading Alerts. You can search for a pop out of the box pattern and it does it automatically. Okay, you don't have to do anything, you just turn it on. And it'll populate potential pop out of the box patterns. Now, just because it's populated a pop out of the box doesn't mean it's your trade. Okay, doesn't mean that it has the tight consolidation that you're looking for. You still have to evaluate the chart. Okay, but when you find these patterns developing, you start looking for that setup to come together. Okay, Ed posted a chart, ABT. You guys can see this nice tight consolidation right here, right? Is that a price alert? You're in the trade. Okay, BSX. Nice tight consolidation. Popped up through your alert, boom, you're in the trade. Take a look at it right there. Take a look at it right there. The same pattern. 
and it is following the trend. Okay. COO. Gap up on an earnings report. You can see this tight consolidation that happened in here, and it's breaking that box to the top side. And if you have a hard time, just, just do, I used to do this for years, put a box around it. And by the way, you notice my box, here, I'm going to pull this over here so you can see it. When I draw from the highs to the lows, it tells me how big the percentage is. sense so when I'm looking for these trades you can see them all over the market MasterCard look at that pop out of the box right there place an alert wait for the entry it's right along trend and it's right at price support okay they're everywhere Visa. Visa is not as clear here. A little bit of wobbling in here on this consolidation against this resistance. But still, same kind of pattern. And as you get more experienced, you'll see those. Um, I like this one down here better. Okay. You'll find these in charts everywhere. Take a look at TMUS. Look at this one right in here. One right here. Just look at the charts. You'll see them all over the place. If you don't have a chart cluttered with too many things, you'll see them. Um, can't type apparently. There we go. So I think it's ARM. ARM um, had some pop out of the box patterns that formed over here. Coming up. This was a really messy pattern in here. Could have potentially got you into a short. And the reason we're looking for short is because we're still in a downtrend. About Gilead today. About the one right down here. Aflac, setting up one now. This one. Come back to trend, into support. Right. And you're going to find, guys, if you look um, all over ARR, let's look at ARR. There's you, there you go, ARR. See, they're not hard to find. Another one that was right here. Look how easy that was. Right off a trend. Port. Pop. Trade. Okay. So, um, Mark in um, our trading room, Mark uses a Heiken Ashi chart. And Heiken Ashi can be really helpful for folks if you find micromanagement is a problem. But if I go over here to Heiken Ashi, and I'm, I apologize, I've got some stuff on here that might be clouding. Off for a moment. 
See how tight that pattern is here on the high Kanashi? Walmart. That's the Heiken Ashi chart. There's the standard chart. There's my alert. There. I can see where the sellers are. I can see where their buyers are. I'm near trend and I'm right on support. So I'm looking for that to potentially pop on higher. Altria. Look at this one right here. Tight that was. Tight right here. Near trend, near support. Philip Morris. Place a price alert and make the trade come to you. Don't anticipate, don't predict it. Make the trade come to you. We had this rally, big strong rally. We rallied up and rest and got a little volatile in this pullback right in here. But notice over here how it tightened up. It got nice and tight in here. Wait for the pop out. Winning trade, winning trade, a lot of those. Take a look at Ross Stores. Got a little volatility here the last few days. Tight price action in here. We're right on a support level. Lost our trend. So, question mark, right? Buster trend. Can we resume our trend here? Maybe. Watch and wait for the trade. This trade could also fail. So you could literally place an alert on both sides of this. Because we've lost our trend and this could potentially end up being a lower high. This would be a pop out of the box down. You wait for that to trigger. And short trade. Following the beginning of a downtrend. Remember, the lower high beginning of a downtrend. Okay. Well, like this one here, this one, I actually drew this line, if that's what you're asking here, John. I drew this line. See these candles right here? One, two, three, four, five, really tight. And then we got this volatility that we've seen in the market here. So this honestly should be moved up here. And then reevaluate on that trade. Okay, because I can see where the sellers are. Okay, at WHT. Oh, Walmart, WMT, sorry, can't read. Yeah, Walmart, there's your setup. It works on every time frame, Bob, um, because, well, price is fractal, right? If, if we were to look at, um, I don't know, I haven't looked at it. If we were to go to a diamonds five minute, did we have any pop out of the box patterns in here today? Really nothing. Too much volatility in here. There's one right there. Okay. Made the first high or low, held support, pop. So it works on every time frame. It works on weekly charts. If I go to a weekly, um, 
Oh, that one was just too steep, really, but you can see right here, only about three days. You might be able to call that in here, but the risk might be too much in here for a weekly. But there's the pattern. Yeah, LTA, um, if you guys are interested, click that link. LTA will automatically find pop out of the box patterns for you. If I pull this back, you'll be able to see in, in any chart. Um, I don't care what chart. We just pick something at random in here. There's a weekly tight pattern right there on TEVA. It works on every time frame. It only requires four minimum candles, okay, in a nice tight consolidation. Here's one that failed. Popped out, reversed, and failed. Get stopped out. That happens once in a while. Okay. That's why we don't anticipate. You anticipate the entry, you end up with more losses. Four candles, yes. Four candles in length. Now, you'll find mat hold patterns that are just three candles. Okay, and they can work as well. But sometimes, uh, you know, if a stock is consolidated for a long period of time, we quit looking at it. But we shouldn't. Because sometimes it's that longer consolidation here, more than four days, that gives us that big upside chart. Okay. Take a look at Coca-Cola here recently. Okay, nice little tight consolidation. Notice we rallied strong. Then we pulled back with a little bit of volatility. And then notice right over here how tight we got. Price action tightened up. It got precise. Okay. Now, trust me on this, guys. You're going to go look at charts. And you're going to be looking for these. And if you have multicolored candles, if you have black backgrounds, pink, I don't care what color backgrounds you have. If you have multicolored candles, if you have a whole bunch of indicators on the chart, trust me on this, you're not going to see very many of them. Okay. White background candle charts, white, black and white candles, and you're going to see these patterns. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at a daily chart or doing what Mark does with the Hike and Ashy. See how tight they get over here in Hike and Ashy? Okay. I'm not going to teach you Hike and Ashy tonight, but they work really well. Um, Mark had a problem with um, micromanagement of trades. He switched to Hike and Ashy. It's what he learned in the RWO room. Last month, I think he said he had a, was an 84% win-loss ratio last month, Mark, something like that. Maybe it was a little bit higher. 87% win-loss ratio last month, trading Hike and Ashy charts. Tightening things up. Okay. Um, LUV, LUV could be setting up and there's, there's that support level in here. Okay. So if you count those other two candles right here, we've got the requirements filled and now you have to set your alert up here where you want to be notified for entry. And by the way, guys, it's perfectly okay. You have to decide where you want your entry. If you look at this chart and you see this pattern and you go and, and this is what I will do, okay? I will look at this chart and say, first, where would I stop out if I'm wrong? Well, underneath here, right? And where do I see the sellers? Well, we've got a little bit of volatility in here. I would actually want to see this tighten up a little bit more because if I use my, my little box in here, if I draw around that, 
from those highs to the lows, you know, we're looking at almost 4%. So kind of volatile in there, but it's volatile right now. Who's to say that it won't tighten up into a pattern like this in the next few days? So watch and wait for the wait for the potential trade. Um, so when you're looking to these patterns, where's the risk? Where's my entry? See if that's going to work for you in the trade. Okay. When you look at a chart like this, be very critical. Try to be really picky on these charts. Because remember, odds are going to be in our favor with the trend. And if we wait for the pattern to occur, we're going to improve our odds of winning the upside. Now, I've spent a lot of time showing you um, stocks, you know, for upside trends and things like that. But what if we go down trends? Can we find pop out of the box patterns in stocks that have been moving in down trends for periods of time? There is a nice long consolidation right here. And notice that all we did here in this chart is came back close to trend. Set your alert under here and wait for the failure to occur. Okay. So it doesn't matter. I was just, the only reason I picked PayPal is because I knew it had been in that really long-term downtrend. Um, and wait for the pattern, okay? Don't try to predict anything in these patterns. Here's why we don't predict. There's a nice consolidation. You anticipate this trade and you get stopped out. Okay. Don't anticipate the trade. When a trade breaks a support and fails, the trade has to recover and then go back into a consolidation or a pullback before this can be a trade again. Because remember, this is a downtrend. Okay, This can only become an uptrend if it makes the first high or low buyers stepping through okay so this I'm not even interested in it at the moment a little rest a little consolidation then maybe but not interested set an alert on juniper this whole line up here was an alert we were moving over to trend don't anticipate don't predict it you can see right here perfect this right here failed. Don't predict the entry. If the risk between the high and the low is too risky, stay out of it. Um, Wicks and Wicks and Tails, Angie and um, um, Mark, there. It kind of all depends on the price action. If you notice right across this area right in here, see how many wicks and tails we had in here? But notice how the majority of those wicks line up right in that area. You can also see that right here. Now this really wasn't a good pattern, but you can see right across here, see how all those wicks are all right there? Sometimes the wicks are giving us information as to where the sellers are. So if you get those wicks that are all lining up, I use the wicks. Okay. Now I prefer, you know, a really tight pattern where we're not getting a whole lot of whipping around. Okay. Yeah, the whole candle is price action. You're exactly right, Ed. So what we're looking for is we're looking, where's the sellers, where's the buyers? Okay, 
all of those wicks right there told us exactly where the sellers were, were residing. It's almost as if an institution had a program going on, push it down, push it down, push it down, push it down. As soon as it popped up there. Okay, so look at the price action because price tells us what we need to know if we're willing to look at it. Okay. TAK. By the way, if I've missed a question, please let me know. TAK might be running into a little bit of a problem here. As we could see where the sellers were and we could see where the buyers were and now they're dropping below that buyer's area. Now it's okay if it can pop right back up here and then continue to consolidate. But if it fails on down more, that's fallen out of the pop out of the box pattern. Okay, It still may be a bullish pattern. A lot of times you'll see this on a long consolidation. We'll get some volatility, push it down, it pushes back up, and then it goes. But remember, be very strict on the patterns. Okay. Yeah, Mark is looking, if you're looking at Heiken Ashi, Heiken Ashi candles are, um, when you get lots of wicks and tails, you're in what's called a transition. But you'll notice when we break that transition that was right in here, we break that transition, there's no tails on those white candles. That indicates a strong upside trend. Okay, back into a consolidation or a transition period on that chart. Okay, take a look at McDonald's here. Same kind of patterns. You just have to decide right in here, a little extra volatility. Is that is that the risk that you want to take on a trade? I prefer them the best is when they tighten up. Look over here. Okay, when they tighten up like that, makes for easy pickings. Don't have to take a lot of risk. Right now, hopefully, one thing that you're noticing in here, guys, is um, you notice I've got lines drawn on the chart, but I'm not using any indicators because for me, price is more important than anything else. It's the price action that gives us the clues to which way the market wants to go, which way the stock wants to go. And if we look for those clues, we really don't need a whole bunch of indicators. It's fine if you use an indicator, but have it on another chart. Say, you know, I use a pattern that's called the 3-8 the trap. You guys have seen those classes. A lot of you I know have seen the classes on 3-8 trap and the videos on YouTube if you haven't. But if you look right in here, if I were to flip this chart to a 3-8 trap chart, and pull this back over here where those lines are. These are all 3-8 trap patterns. They just happen to be pop out of the box as well. Okay, you can find these in continuation patterns to the upside. You can find them in continuation patterns to the downside. You can find them on intraday charts. You can find them on weekly charts. You can find them in high Ashi charts. Okay. They're all over the place. And all it is is price action. There's nothing magic here. We're studying trend. Remember, trend, near trend near support okay 
stock was in a downtrend. How does it make an uptrend? Comes through and it makes that higher low. Then we start uptrending. Okay. So it has to be in a trend. Has to be near the trend in near support. If you find a consolidation, okay, and I see this a lot anymore uh, because of the volatility of the market. If you find a tight consolidation, stock zoomed up, consolidated here a little bit, and you're trying to make this a pop out of the box, but the trend is over here, be careful. Because I see a lot of people will jump on that trade and then it pulls right back and comes back to trend. Okay, it's near trend and near support. But you want to be looking for the trade. These trades fail, they'll win, but they fail at a higher percentage than trades that are near support and trend. Okay. I'll have people that will trade those and yeah, this pop out of the box and it doesn't work. No, it works just fine. You're just not willing to follow the rules. They work just fine. But you've got to be disciplined to a set of rules and the guidelines. We want to be picky about the trades. Think about it, guys. If you could improve your winning percentage, okay, your win-loss ratio like Mark has done this last month, and he's been running in the 80s, by the way, okay, win-loss ratio of 87%. Does he need a whole bunch of trades to make his goals? No, with a win-loss ratio like that, you're not suffering the drawdowns. And why is that working for him? because he's picky about the trades. The pickier you become about the, about the trades, remember, this is your money you're risking. Make the chart earn it. Make the chart earn your money. We're not here to just trade to be busy. We're here to make money. And it's way easier to make money you can trade less and make more if you're picky about those trades. Okay. I saw there was a question in here um, from Rickster GLD. GLD is definitely in a consolidation, but it's not in a tight consolidation. Okay, we are whipping all over the place in here. Okay. So if you look at GLD, that's 2.1%, but of a $232 position. So would it work? That's up to you. I'm going to wait for a tighter consolidation because they do happen here in gold just the same way. They tighten up. They tighten up. Okay, so how picky do you want to be? I'm kind of picky. I really am. I'm picky. Um, it either is a trade or it's not a trade. There's not a lot of gray for me when it comes to a position. eBay. eBay tightening up. See how we had some volatility here, but I want you to notice this trend. Okay. It's tightening up in here, but we're away from trend. You take this trade. You have to be willing, if this has to consolidate all the way out to here, you have to be willing to hold it. If it breaks down here, comes back to trend, well, that's on you. Okay, because it's not near trend. Does that make sense? Be picky about the trades. Seriously study the price action. Okay. Um, 
I'm not a big worrier about dividends. No, I'm really not. Um, I, I want to be remember because I'm waiting for the trade to come to me. If if a dividend is paid and the stock falls and I'm not in the trade, I don't care because I'm not predicting that T. But if you look in here in this trend, it's pretty darn pretty darn steep. Okay, you had a little tight consolidation right here. And you have to make that call. Is that trade acceptable to you in that trade? You can see it's a winner. I mean it may not have made great money, but it made but it made money. And it may have more upside potential coming. Okay. So it, 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 this works in any chart to um, take a look at um, XLP. Didn't get really four days there. We only had three little resting days in there. But you'll see patterns that'll tighten up even in ETFs. You get these tighter patterns that'll start to show up in ETFs, in the IWM in the SPY, in inverse ETFs. They work the same there, okay? It'll work the same in currency if you trade Forex. It'll work the same if you trade precious metals. It'll work the same if you trade commodities. SOYB, <clears throat> there is no pattern here yet. A little too much volatility in it. It may go here, but I'd rather wait. Here's a nice little short. <coughs> Corn could be setting up. A little bit more structure. Don't be too surprised if this has to rest a little bit more for your potential trade wheat you can see it right there not too hard to see nice chart David I like that one setting up the tighter the consolidation the more it tightens up you get this candle right here if your stop loss is under here this is here you don't jump there okay you don't make the jump because you can have trades that end up like, um, let's see, that. Okay, there's that bullish candle. Oh my gosh, jump on the trade. I'm going to miss out. Get stopped out. Anticipate for the trade IEF still running in an upside trend it's not quite there um, for a pop out of the box pattern it's bullish but if it can consolidate and rest in here in this range over to the trend then yes you may have something there IOT, yeah, there's nothing there, Mel. This is a bullish chart, but this is a runaway. I mean, where do you put your stop in there and have a logical stop? This is just a chase. It needs a rest, pullback, consolidation of some kind for any trade for me. This is just chasing. T, I always use the dollars, um, percentage stops. Think about it. If you have a percentage stop on um, GLD and it's $232 and a percentage stop on something that's like Coke that's $71, that's a big difference in risk. A lot more dollars involved. 
I don't know about you, but I have to pay my bills in dollars. I don't get to choose a percentage. So all of my stop losses are based on how much I can risk on a trade, how much I'm willing to risk. I do not base a trade on a percentage. How many dollars I'm willing to risk. Okay. Same for TLT. Yeah, TLT would be the same. Um, TLT, we just don't have any pattern here yet. Um, even for a pop out of the box, it's bullish. Okay, it's holding in there and bullish, but it's all kinds of schizophrenic in here. You know, Mark is saying something, a smooth trend, few wicks. That's really important, guys. When you look at a chart like this, can you really see any rhyme or reason to this price action? It's, it's all over the map. It doesn't mean that you can't trade it or shouldn't trade if, if you like the trade. You might have to go to a weekly to find the tightness in here on the weekly to place a trade you got to be able to t handle the risk. Okay, but this chart here, it gaps all the time, it's whipping all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason there. And it's been a long time since it's had a nice little tight consolidation on the daily. Okay. Guys, be discerning about your charts. Look at him, make the trade. It, it, it either fesses up and puts in a nice pattern for you or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, move on. I don't care if you love TLT. I don't care if you love gold. I don't, whatever it is. I don't care if you are absolutely um, infatuated with one of the big tech giants. It doesn't matter. If the pattern's not there, it's not there. We can't will it to occur. Okay, how many of you have proven over time you can't will a stock to move in your direction? Okay, look for the pattern. If the pattern's not there, it's not there. Don't try to make something out of it that that because you want it to be there market don't markets don't care what we want okay stock doesn't care about me it doesn't care what i want and it doesn't care how much i i think i know follow the patterns in the chart okay and you know, the thing is, guys, if you get your ego out of the way, predicting all that kind of garbage, if you get it out of the way, you'll enjoy your trading a lot more because you're not investing yourself in, you are in a business to risk money to make money. If you're investing your ego into every trade, no wonder people are half sick trying to trade. The market doesn't care. It doesn't, again, I tried for a long time to prove to the market that I was smart enough, I knew more about the market than the market did. And guess what? I was wrong. <laughs> the market has a way of humbling you. When you think you know something, it's just, it's gotta always be this way. It won't always be that way. Exactly right, Ed. Exactly right. Be discerning about the price. We're not here to trade just to risk money. At least I'm not. We're here to make money with high quality trades that fit our risk profile. Okay. Um, ECL. 
well, there's no pattern there. This is a pullback opportunity trade and a big whippy one. Um, at that, if you're looking for the pop out of the box, this is not a pop out of, it's not even close. Um, Altria is a good example. Nice tight resting patterns, consolidating patterns, smooth price action. Take a look at Philip Morris. Nice tight resting patterns, smooth price action. PepsiCo might come into that pattern right now. It's been really whippy and gunky and all kinds of stuff. Broke through this resistance up here. Might be coming into a pattern. Clorox. Smooth price action. Not really whippy. Wicks or tails aren't too crazy. Look at the pop out of the box right there. Okay. DOC. DOC. Nice pop here. Um, if, if your risk tolerance can handle the box that this is this wide. By the way, these tails tell you where the, the buyers are. That wide, then okay. But that's not a pop out of the box for me. Mike wants me to, okay, um, I'll, I'll show it. Um, I don't use indicators, not because I don't know how to use them. I know how to use them. I, I really know how to use them. But I can also tell you that a chart like this, even though I knew everything there was to know about this, didn't make me money. Okay. I, I, I know a lot about indicators. I can write custom indicators. Indicators never made me money. Price action makes me money. Okay, NYCB, um, yeah, maybe. It's got a, quite a resistance overhead here. And the way I look at this right now, that's a little bit of a downtrend. So we've got what's called a wedge. This is a symmetrical triangle. It, it's got about a 50% chance of breaking to the upside or breaking to the downside. It, it's a maybe yet. In fact, what I would probably do on this chart and say, I want you to be bullish. Break out up here and then hold and then I'll be interested in you. I mean, how many times do we have to fail here along this line before we believe it's true? Break through and then hold, and then I'm going to be interested in it. Okay. Um, ORC, nice little tight pattern, but you've got a problem here, um, Billy. Um, hopefully you can see that. There was the trend. The trend broke. We lost support. Stock is still in a downtrend. So... If you're looking at this as a short, I'm with you. Potential entry under here, if this fails, there's your short. Perfect. If you're looking long, yeah, got a problem with it, but that would be a possible short. Good work. Yeah, good work.
You know, I used to say this all the time. Stock's gone up so much it can't go up anymore. There's no rule in the market that says that. Um, all-time highs often make more all-time highs. So just trade the chart. Okay. Um, you know, look at the... What's making Lockheed Martin move up, guys? Yeah, multiple wars. Did, does it look like those are going to stop soon? Lockheed Martin. Who knows where it can go? So just trade the chart. Remember, that's all we can do is read the price action of the chart. Win or lose is up to the market. We've got two things that we can control in any trade, guys. You know what they are? How much we pay for the entry. How much we're willing to risk to the stop loss. That's the only two things that we can control in the market. Everything else is up to the market. Okay. If this wants to continue to go up, it can certainly go up as long as people keep buying, institutions keep buying, and wars continue to happen. Every reason to believe that that could go up further. Okay. Now, remember, if you're uncomfortable with the trade, if the trade doesn't fit you, say for example, I'm looking to enter it here and my stop loss has to be here, that's, that's the thing you should be worried about. How much am I risking? It's near support, it's near trend. If you're a technical trader, what else do you want? It's not going to tell you its future. All we can do is trade the chart in front of us and we have to base it on how much we're really willing to risk on the trade. Okay, make some sense. So guys, this is just kind of the basic primer um, on the pop out of the box pattern. There's a lot more to know, particularly in you know, figuring out the options or the strategy that you might want to trade um, on that. But um, this gives you an idea what to look for and how to look for it. The LTA scanner can help you find them. You can find them just simply by flipping through charts. I mean, you don't have to do anything special. If you've got a, um, a black and white chart like this, you can see the tight consolidations. If you use a Heike and Ashy, it's, it's easy as well. Okay, we're looking for a tight pattern. The tighter the pattern, the better. Near support and near trend. Whether it's in an upside trend or a downside trend, it doesn't matter and then make the trade come to you. Don't anticipate it, don't predict it. Make it come to you, wait for it. Be willing to wait for the trade to move into your, into your position. Okay. Trend and support, very important. Price action and your risk tolerance can tell you how wide of a consolidation that you can take. Right? Just look through the charts. They're everywhere, guys. I'm in this one right now. The, at the end of the day, here, let me just take a look because I didn't look exactly at the end of the day. My AT&T trades up 57.3%. Trade the chart. Trade the price action, not the indicators. 
And you'll see these patterns if you look for them. And it's one of my favorites to trade. So. Artwork, I'm, <laughs> you know, I have said good chart reading. Um, good chart reading is, is an art form. It really is. Oh, B12, <laughs> B12 is <laughs> posting a carving. Um, I, I carve wood on the side. <laughs> but I think there is an art to reading charts. Okay. The more you study, the more you practice price action, the better you'll be. And, you know, the thing is, the more you'll enjoy it, because I don't put my ego into trades. So, yeah, B12 wants one of those, and I just haven't taken the time to carve one. But I need to get, I need to get one done for him. And don't get me started on carving. We'll be here for another hour. Um, I, it needs to pull back, Kev. This is really steep. It needs a consolidator pullback for another entry into the trade. Yeah, <clears throat> what Mark is saying is true and the right way options. We have a two hour session every day where you guys can ask me anything about any chart, any price pattern, any setup, any option set up, whatever you want. You can ask me anything in two hours can, every single day. And I'll do my best to try and help. Okay, I'm not for everybody. I'm not a hype guy. I'm not a predictor guy. All right, guys, have a great evening. Thanks so much for being here today. Hope you got something out of this. Hope it can improve your trading. If um, you liked what you saw here, maybe consider a trial. Thanks everyone. Take care, be safe, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow morning for the morning market prep. Take care everyone, wish you all the best.